Hey guys, and welcome to Let's Play Rogue Galaxy. This game is an interesting kind of mix. And as I demonstrated earlier on in my update video, the start of the uh, opening here doesn't really work the way it was intended because I am running a couple of mods. I am running the widescreen mod which, uh, well, I did my test run, or I started to do my test run on PCSX2 uh, 1.7 something or other. I got multiple crashes, so I cut back to 1.6 because that worked. And before I was able to get the LP started, 2.02 .02 released. So we're running on 2.02. .02. And hopefully that'll fix some of the other issues that I had, but I will still talk about them when we get there. Regardless, we're running a 60 FPS mod, hence the issue with the uh, start screen there that uh, you just saw. The 60 FPS mod fixes a lot of stuttering issues and lagginess in terms of the uh, kind of the feel the character works in game. So we're going to be running that as well as a widescreen patch, because I believe this game was originally released in 4x3. And with that said, uh, yeah, we're running four times internal resolution, 16 times anti-aliasing. We're running everything through the upscale because, well, the art style they use for this game works Any really well at holding a lot of the intent of the uh, like kind of the style. Of it looks really good. Each with its own history. But the low resolution kind of hurts it. So having that uh, additional uh, this is a story inter like uh, the, in the extra uh, upscaling a is going to help a lot with the uh, look of the game in 2024. Now, there is a PS4 port of this game that has a lot of this basic upscaling already on it. If you're interested in playing it that way, that's entirely up to you. Feel free to play along however you'd like. For my purposes, I will be playing the PS2 version since I already own the game on PS2 and emulating it because that's the easiest way to get footage and it's also the easiest way to play it. At least for me. It's easier to turn on my PC, which is always on, than to dig out my PS2, which is in a box somewhere. Anyway, with this setup that I've got, uh, there's some minor slowdown in certain scenes, or at least there was on version 1.6 of the software. But I don't know if that's going to carry over now. Uh, I tried lowering the internal resolution from 4 to 3 and even to 2 and even taking it right off, and I still got all that same slowdown. So I'm assuming it's kind of part of the game and it's just too many sprites and too many particle effects on screen at the same time. So we're going to just kind of deal with it. It doesn't happen all that often. With that being said, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about before we actually get in here and that works out because the intro is pretty much over. There's going to be a lot to talk about with this game, though, especially at the start. My notes are jam packed. I have 41 pages of notes. I didn't even have this much for Chrono Cross, and I thought that was going to be a headache. Anyway, with that being said, new game, no more flashy stuff that can go away. This game is nice. It gives you a little story recap of what's going on over the course of the game leading up to when you're loading your save file. In this case, the war that divides the galaxy has cast a dark shadow upon the distant desert planet Rosa. Highly valued for natural resources, Rosa has been put under direct control of the Longardian Federation in an attempt to prevent invasion from the Draxian Empire. Standard rule of role-playing games, federations and, you know, republics are good, empires are bad. Under Longardian's watchful eye, the enslaved Ro oh wait, maybe maybe I spoke too soon. Uh, the uh, enslaved Rosens now find themselves forbidden to leave the planet. Now, this is a PS2 game. The uh, cinematics do not upscale, at least to my knowledge, so they are still going to be running without that upscale, and you'll see a little bit of the kind of the particle effects in certain parts of them. Some of them are more cutscene 
heavy than others. Like, like some of them are like full on CGI cutscenes, and some of them are cutscenes played within engine. Anything played within engine gets upscaled proc. And as you can see, it's got a rather unique art style, which does a lot better Trapped job in this desert wasteland. The sands of time blow ceaselessly. But it's not going to end like this. I'm going to find my way out of here. I swear it. The art style does a really good job of holding up because they didn't go for photorealism. They went for a style and usually style is able to progress and hold its own later on into different generations. Going realistic when technology is inevitably going to progress, not so much. The information came from a credible source. He's here, all right. He should be hiding out somewhere on Rosa. Desert Claw. He's one of the galaxy's top hunters. Maybe he got his mitts on a load of dosh and he's off living it up somewhere. Can't believe he'd be wasting his time on this slave rock. Don't worry, he's somewhere on this planet. My instincts are infallible. Like I'm gonna trust the robot's instincts. I would if I were you. They're quite uncanny. Besides, I can use this to determine whether or not he's the real deal. Just leave it to Steve, all right? Really? Well, the captain will be pretty cheesed off if we don't find him. So you'd better come through on this. I know, I know. I don't know what Dosh is. If you do, let me know in comments. Also, I'm getting Team Rocket vibes from those two. Just saying. Anyway, this game is a PS2 title originally released at the end of 20 or 2005 in Japan. It took over a year to get it to North America and almost two years to get it to the EU and to Australia. So yeah, the there are a few different versions of this game. There's the North American, the EU and the director's cut, which is basically a redone Japanese version. They all play almost identically. There's some minor uh, damage calculation changes among them. You did well, boy. But nothing major. Two medium-sized mish. Okay, pal, you met your quota. And here's your pay. That looks like a small bag. Huh? Is that all? Can't you spare a little extra? We didn't bring that much with us, you know. <laughs> Besides, slaves like you should be grateful we even bother to share our rations. <laughs> I'm not doing this for my health, you know. This is all that I got today. Those long guardians are getting a little too big for their britches. You gonna let them get away with it? No, no, don't get so worked up over it. It's been two years since Rose has been under Longardian rule. They're still struggling to get used to this place. We'll get our chance soon enough. Oh, man. Why did Rosa have to get mixed up in this war? Uh, it used to be such a peaceful planet. The Longardians aren't all bad, though. Now that their lookouts are posted at the gate, we never get beasts in town anymore. But the whole reason they're posted there is to keep an eye on us. What the? Seems I spoke too soon. There's a beast in town. A pretty big one by the looks of it. All right, I'll take care of it. Jester, wait. Don't worry, I'll behave. Well, they've done a pretty good job of introducing the world to us. Give us a great idea through somewhat realistic dialogue. And hello, giant, whatever the that is. The is. Area. Huh? Oh, hello, skeletons. Fun. Damn, I'm surrounded. Well, that was a short game. See you guys next time.
I want him in my party. These foes are nothing. They just rode in on the big guy's coattails. Huh? Who are you? Let's finish these chumps off first. Okay, new game. They're going to start introducing it to us some basic ideas, and I haven't even gotten to half my notes so far. Lovely. The combat system in this game is action based. We have X for sword slash and square for gunfire, circle for jump. Now, the way that the game works is it relies on giving each character two weapons. In Jasser's case, our main character, our square attack is going to have a set amount of ammo. Once we've exhausted it, we're going to have to wait a certain amount of time for it to reload magically. I don't know. Video game logic. We'll, we'll just roll with it. So we're going to need to do that. Um, you can like it's action based, so you can kind of sort of a little bit guard cancel. But there is also a guard feature in this game. R1 guards against attacks. It does more than just guarding against attacks. We will get into that in more time. We can also open up the menu and then use a number of abilities to, you know, items, abilities, whip, uh, changing equipment, etc. So let's kind of just spam the X button real quick here. Finish off a few of these guys. And basically just keep hitting the X button repeatedly. You don't need to hit it super fast. The, uh, the game doesn't hold inputs or anything like that. So hitting it a thousand times is not going to get you into a long ass chain. That. You're pretty strong. <laughs> that wasn't even a warm up. Who are you? I'm your ally, of course. For now, anyway. A future enemy? More importantly, the big fella went off toward the residential area. That beast is worth at least 20,000. 20,000 what? Am I getting paid? 20,000? What are you, some kind of hunter? Pretty much. Didn't we just hear somebody say something about that? Okay, we have the action gauge. Um, basically, it's indicated there on screen. It's those uh, little teal uh, squares are kind of below Jasser's name. Every time you initiate an action in battle, it is reduced. And if it's all the way reduced, you cannot perform an action until it recharges. Uh, it will recharge back 100% to full after a set amount of time. Or if you guard, that's the uh, button there. Uh, so yeah, once it's depleted, you won't be able to do anything. Uh, it'll show you an, an attack on screen, like a the words back tell you that you can attack again. Um, let's see. Yeah, if you if your uh, action gauge or stamina is I'll be calling it going forward is uh, exhausted and you hold R1 and are struck by an enemy, you will instantly recharge to full. So the game really wants you to guard. OK, there's a lot to get into with the basic uh, kind of combat system. We're going to get tutorial to death for a little while here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go over a few notes here real quick. We have a lot of NPCs around here. Camera controls are exactly how you would expect them. You have the ability to invert them to uh, not be inverted, I guess, if you're an alien and you don't like controlling your camera like a camera. But uh, that's entirely up to you. Your attacks are ineffective. Now, this game has more NPCs than probably any other game I've ever played. It's a massive amount. And while they're not the most useful NPCs in terms of like being super interesting to read everything they say, they do almost always build the world. And it's actually worthwhile talking to all of them, even if you're not going to pay all that much attention to I wouldn't bother to remember any of their names, but you do you. All right. So let's open up our menu here real quick and we'll go down to system, go into settings. 
you can take a look at some of the options you have. You've got an auto lock on, which I have been using. You can change the camera, battle camera to lower high. It doesn't make any difference. It's basically the same. Uh, memory, normally I leave this off unless I'm doing something specific, but here it comes on by default and I just leave it. Always want the compass on, always want the mini map on. Normal is inverted the way that would be inverted in almost every other game. So that's why mine are set there because if I am moving my uh, camera. I want to actually move the camera, not my character. Uh, battle messages, we will leave those on temporarily. An active chat, we will leave that on temporarily. It will get annoying and then we'll turn it off. I just want to give you an idea of what you're going to deal with if you leave it on. And it does have useful points. It just, it's too much. Okay. Circle is jump. You're allowed to jump even in uh, the field. So that's nice. Get inside the church. Oh, so let's get inside the church. What the heck is going on? That, sorry about the uh, little flash there. Basically, that's just me making sure that I have the right things open so that I can see uh, my maps and stuff like that. Anyway, so you can talk to your party members. You can talk to the NPCs. Salgan is the name of the town. So now we know that. If it didn't pop it up before, it might have. Voices of the Noble Swords. Hmm, wonder if that'll be important later. Never seen that many before. Who knows what would have happened? We owe them one. Hmm. The desert spirits will keep us safe. Weird looking guy on my way here. Must have been a bounty hunter. Are you talking about the guy who seems like a bounty hunter that's behind me? What about you? Must be a humanoid type beast. Hmm. Wonder if that's or er, important in any way. Now, did I talk to you? Yeah, yeah, I did talk to you. Now you'll notice here that there is a glowing around the treasure chest. This happens with all treasure chests to indicate to you where they are, and it's a nice little feature to have. Uh, there's supposed to be a second item in here. Was I supposed to talk to somebody twice? I have two items listed on my map here. Can I go in this door? No. Oh no, sorry, my bad. I am I looked at the part of the map. What's going on here? Why did they let that thing get in? Don't push you here. Don't don't worry about the uh this is where it is. Yeah. I was looking at the uh the shape on the uh the map there and thought the entire thing was the building. It is not. So anyway, we can move on. But yeah, there's a lot to the combat and we'll try and go over it somewhat slowly. I don't want to just the town's going to be destroyed. I don't want to bog you down too much, but I also do want to explain things and things are going to be important. We're not you. What do you have to say? Peace, peace, peace. Well, you could do that. This is a desert planet, so it kind of makes sense to be placed right along the river. Things start to get hairy up ahead. Use the transporter. Transport. Your way around it. Yep, we're going to get tutorial, so we definitely know. The transporter is a save device. If you lose during battle, it's game over. Yeah, no shit. OK, we can save. We can teleport to any other transporter on that planet. You notice the note in the bottom right there. You cannot teleport from one transporter on one planet to a transporter on another planet. This is unfortunate, and if this game was made today, it would definitely have that, but it's not, which means there's some tediousness about that later on. We'll, we'll get into it. Also, you get free recovery every time you touch a save point, so there is never a reason not to. Also, anytime it is indicated in red, you have not activated it. Once you've activated it for the first time, it will be in blue. You don't need to do anything else. You're instantly healed from that. And this will allow you to teleport to that as soon as we find another transport. 
the minimap is going to be important. We're going to want to kind of keep that. So early on combat isn't particularly difficult. You can pretty much get away by spamming. Uh, the spam of your normal attack with the X button actually does unleash a combo. I think it's a three or four hit combo. And like I said earlier, there's a little bit of kind of dodge canceling or guard canceling in this game. But if you're in the middle of a combo, no go. They're talking about lock on here. Basically, if you see those arrows uh, kind of in the middle image there, that indicates that you're locked on to an enemy. You can use the uh, directional buttons uh, up and down to turn the lock function on and off or left and right to switch between targets. You're only ever going to want to switch between targets. It's rare that you'll want to take lock off. Uh, but if that is something that will show up, then I will get into it more at that point. Again, we can go into the settings and take it back there. Now you'll notice in the, uh, I've just pressed the triangle button here. And you'll notice down below Jaster's name there, just down below that arrow, the amount of stamina that I have left is on the lower side. I can use an item as long as I have some stamina left. But if I don't have any stamina left, which I won't be able to show because we won the battle already, but then I wouldn't be able to use an item. Uh, Minimap display. Uh, yeah, there's a, a little upside down triangle or pyramid to indicate doors. That's also good. Now, I'm not going to explore a lot right now because we want to get to the first shop ASAP. Uh, how much money do I have? Uh, where's my money? Okay, I was just uh, checking on a couple of things on how much money I need upcoming. Yes, we're already routing money into our gameplay. It, it's complicated. We'll get into it later. There, there's a lot of aspects to this game that we can play with. So we can actually take the wrong way and go do a few extra battles because we're going to need money before we can go to the shop. Never been so scared. Uh, I can, but I'm not going to. Okay. Bad. Not these guys. Triangle initiates your menu. It's an action RPG, but it has a full stop system, allowing you to heal at any time. If you're used to other games where like more recent games, like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it's a recent game that I've played, you go to use a healing item in that game and you get interrupted. You don't get interrupted. The game stops and you can basically just go and heal. And as you can see by the items that we get access to, reviving with full HP, restoring 50% of our HP with a single potion, healing items are insanely abusive in this game. We can do a lot with what we're given and having that option is going to take this game from what otherwise feels a lot of the time if you're coming at it from the perspective of playing more recent games and playing them like you would play a more recent game. It seems like it's quite difficult, but it's also extremely forgiving because it gives you all the freedom in the world to basically heal whenever you want. You can also go into your main menu. You can go to allies. Later on, we'll get more than one ally and we'll be able to use the swap allies ability and we'll be able to pull in different party members in the same fight. So there's a lot of kind of creativity and variety that the game allows you to get. There is a strategy command where you can basically set your team command to either fight separately, pick the same target, go all out, meaning they will use abilities and items freely Do not use this or they will do nothing. You are going to want to use this at certain times, but primarily you're going to focus on these two. I almost never use this because I want to have control over my items. I hate allowing NPCs or in this case, uh, just other party members to control and use my items without my knowledge. As you can see by the fact that Jaster is level one and our hearted man is level 20, plus what we saw in the uh, cutscene, he's a little bit more powerful than we are. Anyway, if we press the square button, we will shoot. Now, 
from what I read, you'll notice in the top left corner there that there was a little indicator, and that indicator would show uh, the amount of ammo I have. That carries on from battle to battle. So when I run out, I won't be able to use the gun for a while. According to the official strategy guide, you can actually do more damage the closer you are. Up, the town's gonna be destroyed. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier about the uh, active, what they call it in this game, active chat. Basically, the characters we have will repeat the same lines every 20 seconds or so. And it's nice for the first little bit, and then it gets really tedious because you hear it over and over and over again. It got to the point where I was listening to the soundtrack outside of the game, and I could just hear characters say lines, even though there was no lines in that recording. And yeah, it's 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 a nice idea the first time, but give me the line once and then move on. Don't just repeat the same lines over and over and over again. Now, like I said, the NPCs are kind of useful for building up information about kind of the world. But at the same time, they're not particularly like almost none of them are going to tell you something particularly useful. Now, as you can see, I've run out of ammo. I'm no longer able to do anything with my gun. Now, that line shows up meaning that I ran out of stamina and then I pressed the R1 button to block until I was struck, got struck, reduced the damage with R1 and then was also able to get back all of my stamina so that I could start attacking. Now your allies will give you uh, suggestions over the course of the game. I ignore all of these 100% of the time. They are tedious, they are annoying and I have very little interest in what they have to say. I would much rather figure things out for myself, uh, but it's there and you can't turn them off, sadly. All right, we have treasure chest. Can't open this without the star key. You'll notice here that the treasure chests actually physically look different. There's kind of a, a lock on there. Keep that in mind for later. You will see other treasure chests that have similar looking uh, kind of art, and that will tell you whether you'll be able to open those chests or not. All right, so they seem to have blocked off this door. You're in the way. I don't see you guys killing anybody. All right, this Why game, this crawling with beasts? it is a town. It seems kind of weird. Man, now, You'll notice how we've only had a few battles and Jaster has said pretty much the same thing at the start of every fight. Yeah, that's going to continue to be annoying all game long. Sadly. That's the end of that. Now, let's go into something else here. Let's take a look at our equipment. Each weapon that we get in the game has the same kind of basic setup. It's got a power value. The skills value is basically a, what's a good word for it? Basically, it's a use meter. It goes up by one uh, section every, every battle up to 15, and then the skills line will be mastered. After that skills line is mastered, the weapon will be available for synthesizing later in the game when we get access to it. Basically, don't sell anything because like Final Fantasy IX, we're going to want to synthesize a lot in this game. If you continue to equip a weapon after the skills section is already mastered, it will slowly, one, one per battle, boost up those elemental affinities at the bottom. Now, my understanding is that each of those elemental affinities will add a certain amount of damage to your weapons if the enemy happens to be weak to a specific element. And I could have already talked about specific enemies being weak to certain elements. The uh, dragonflies that we fought on the way into this corner, they're weak to wind. The mish enemies, which are the smaller ones, are weak to ice. And those statue dogs are weak to fire. But for the vast majority of the time, it really doesn't matter. So I'm basically not going to talk about uh, elemental weaknesses outside of boss fights. 
there's no real need to worry about it, and it just doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of how we're going to play this game. So anyway, both our weapons, uh, like literally both of our weapons, our sword and our gun, they both level up. Our armor is kind of unique for this game. It has almost no impact on defense. And this is an accessory slot that we will almost never make use of throughout the entire game. Don't ask me why it's here. It, it really doesn't need to be here. Wep or, uh, armor in this game is basically a skin or a change of outfit. So I'm basically just going to use whatever the most recent one is for each character. So we'll get to see a little bit of each one throughout the game. But the main purpose is to work on our weapons. And we are going to be doing a lot with it, but Again, I don't want to bog you down too much early on in the game, so we're going to move on. Something's wrong here. There's just too many beasts. Yep, there's definitely a lot of them. So I just guarded that attack there. Anytime you see an enemy kind of rear back for an attack, you probably want to guard. Yeah, they were saying earlier that having these soldiers here was a bait about to, uh, you know, kind of help us out. And now there's no longer beasts in town, but now there is. Now, going into our item menu, we're going to select the heal potion. We're going to use it on Jaster to make sure he's all healed up. And we're going to go over here and grab a treasure chest. Right, we got that one. What the heck is going on? Again, we can go into any town that or any uh, building that has uh, that indicator on there. There are a lot of doors that don't have an indicator on it. So kind of be aware of that. Never seen so many. Now, here is a ladder. Ladders are really slow to climb. It will show you. Very slow to climb. If at all possible, we are going to avoid those by jumping. Here, this one needs the Earth Key. So we're going to have to keep these in mind for later. As you can see here, there is a lot of the same dialogue over and over and over again. Now, here they're talking about the uh, camera there. It doesn't seem to even be as much as they're indicating right there, but I don't care. Is that all, you got? Yeah. all right, so we're just going to block that. All right, we're going to guard because we can't attack. Attack indicates on screen and we can attack again. Okay. We got a Thunderstone. Now, the way... Well, we'll get into it in a minute. Okay, we're going to get into it now. I told you we're going to get tutorialed to death here. Revelation Flow is basically how you learn abilities in this game. It's kind of like the license board in Final Fantasy XII, from what I remember. I have not played that game in years since well before the Zodiac uh, remaster thing came out on PC. So yeah, I, I don't remember, but probably something like that. Basically, the way it works is you need a set amount of items to unlock different abilities and unlocking one ability gives you access to the one beside it. If the arrow indicates that is the case. Uh, Sometimes you'll need more than one, and you can also level up uh, individual skills by getting the next level of them in the flow. So we now have access to Revelation Flow. So let's go into here. We cannot use the Hooded Mans. We can only use Jasters. So as you can see, that's kind of the whole area that he has access to. Uh, they have a, a zoom in, zoom out. I thought there was a zoom in and a zoom out. Eh, whatever. 
Anyway, we have a Thunderstone here. So what we do is we select it and then it'll bring up our actual item menu. And the thing is, like we can move around and select something else and it won't work. So I don't know why you can instead of just putting the thing in there right away, but it at least allows you to see the amount that uh, you have access to, the amount of each item, in this case, a Thunderstone. So we're going to unlock Flash Sword, our first ability. Go down, we'll take a look at it. We'll press the triangle button to view the ability. Infuses the blade with the power of lightning. Increases its attack power. And then below, it's kind of some of the features of it. It's continuous, meaning that uh, you cast it and it, it's there until it runs out. It's unblockable, which means the enemy can't block it. It inflicts lightning elemental damage from the lightning bolt with the circle around it. And the other one, I think, indicates paralysis, if I remember correctly. I'm, I'm not very good at remembering what all the symbols mean. But anyway, we will continue on here. You better have some sort of strategy. Strategy would be nice. Oh, these guys. Oh, it's awfully noisy all of a sudden. It would appear a beast has invaded the town. What luck. How is that luck? would never pass up a chance to score a load of points like this. Eh, good point. Let's go check it out. Are you bonkers? It's way too dangerous. Come on, this way. Hey, wait for me. Okay, here's kind of uh, something I'll talk about here. The game was made by Level 5, Level 5 Studio. They are the ones that make the uh, Nino Kuni games. And as you can tell, the art style is not really the same, but it's the same kind of 3D cell shaded style. So there's certain aspects you can see that they worked with from there. Before they made this game, they had only made three games. Dragon Quest VIII, for a new studio, how the hell did they get access to that? And then the first two Dark Cloud games. So they were still relatively new to video games at the time. They'd only had a few games under their belt, not a particularly well-established studio. So the fact that this game is extremely, and I mean extremely, like in terms of scope, they went balls to the wall. There are so many ideas at play here. They wanted this game to be a Final Fantasy. They wanted this to be a huge game in the genre. And considering this is the only one, they didn't really get what they wanted. But the scope of the game is really cool, and it does allow for a lot of interesting ideas to be played with. We're hosed. What are you, Canadian? I can say that because I am Canadian. All right, talk to you. Watch your back, keep your cool, okay. Okay, what do we have here? Funny looking strangers near the item shop. Hmm, so we've heard. Saw a giant, well, we kind of saw a giant. It was very large, whatever it was. Beast of Smash the Bridge. This is absurd. Can't take a name. Now, the game doesn't tell you this, but uh, you can jump. And I failed to jump because I fell off the edge. But anytime you jump, like in the field, and you find a ledge, you just press up and press uh, X, and then you will get past whatever the obstacle is. What are we supposed to do now? Swim? Well, I know it's a desert, but you can probably still swim. You live literally on a river. I would expect you to at least try. All right, a couple more treasure chests here. I'm not going to talk about what all of these items do because it's not this particularly important. The town's gonna be destroyed. All right, what I'm going to do is open up the menu. Here. There are, like I said, teleport. You can teleport to any other uh, teleporter that you have access to. You get a free heal, you can save, and item storage. Press R1 or L or L2 or R2, and you have an entire second set for your items. 
you have this many slots to store your items on you on your person and this many in each save point. Now, you don't you don't have to like organize them from this save point to that save point. All save points have a collective space where they will hide all of your items here. We're never going to run out of space for our items. We're, we are going to have to use this to store some stuff, but other than that, it's not a big Anyway, I'm going to save and we are going to make use of the second memory card because the first one is basically full of everything else I've done on uh, PS2. I've filled in an eight megabyte memory card. So we are going to save and I think we're going to call that a day. There's a lot that we've gone over and there's a lot more to go. But I want to make sure that everything is running properly since this is the first recording of this Let's Play. So I am going to go and play around with editing this episode and hopefully everything works out. And if not, then we will have fixes in store for the second one. That's pretty much all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.